when I was browsing through the data of pterosaurs earlier, I immediately thought of the only flying mammals, which are bats. However, as I began to search for information on bat evolution, I realized that this was indeed a mistaken idea. I was just creating trouble for myself because fossils are extremely scarce to the extent that we still don't have a clear understanding of the evolutionary history of bats. Therefore, when it comes to the story of bats, I can only gather as much information as possible to create my own hypothesis about bat evolution. So, this video represents only my personal perspective. The story of bats starts with a large meteorite 66 million years ago, which is the extinction event we often mention. That doomsday catastrophe caused significant losses to Earth's biota, with many Mesozoic stars, like dinosaurs, perishing. However, this didn't last long, as surviving animals on various continents immediately began a new round of competition, and the ancestors of bats were among them. The earliest ancestors of bats were likely small mammals resembling Creacus, attempting to live in the canopy layer after the tragic post-extinction era. Following the mass extinction, only small patches of forests remained scattered across the devastated land. This narrow ecological environment diminished the interest of large predators, while the plants and insects in the forests provided protection and food for small animals. Therefore, the ancestors of bats began to evolve to adapt to life in the canopy layer. For example, they may have evolved elongated hand structures with large palms to grasp tree trunks. However, I came across an interesting hypothesis that the ancestors of bats liked to hang on trees and wait for prey. When they saw insects passing by, they would directly grab them with their large palms. In order to make it easier to catch insects, the ancestors of bats grew membranes between their fingers. When I read about this hypothesis, I had an image in my mind of the ancestors of bats with flyswatters on their forelimbs, and then bats began to flap their wings to fly. It's hard to believe, but the reality is, we still don't know when bats actually started to fly. What can be clearly stated is that around 56 million years ago, the ancestors of bats were already capable of gliding or even flying. Around 55 million years ago, our familiar event appeared, the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. Global temperatures suddenly rose by 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. From this event onwards, Earth entered a warm period lasting 20 million years. During this time, the previously scattered small forests began to connect into large expanses of forests, eventually forming forests worldwide. This meant that all the animals isolated in small forests were suddenly involved in a brutal competition. We don't know what the ancestors of bats went through, but we do know that bats were one of the winners of this fierce competition. During this time, bats truly mastered the ability to fly, as evidenced by the earliest bat fossil records we have from this period. The most primitive body pattern of bats known so far is from Onychonycteris, which lived in North America around 52.5 million years ago. They already had clear flying abilities, and the difference from modern bats is that they still had claws at the ends of their five fingers. This suggests that they might still have needed to climb trees occasionally. I still can't figure out why. At that time, primates had already occupied the arboreal niche and birds were the rulers of the sky. How did bats find opportunities to survive in such a challenging environment? From this perspective, bats must have had some survival skills. As mammals, bats lack the developed vision of birds in their air sac system. The advantages of mammals are of no use for flight. 
Yet, bats have overcome these difficulties. They greatly enhance their metabolic rate, with body temperatures reaching 40 degrees Celsius while flying, much higher than other mammals. At the same time, their heart rates reach up to 1,000 beats per minute during flight. Bats also evolved the echolocation system creatively. Anyway, it's not very difficult for mammals to independently evolve echolocation systems, like whales and dolphins. Although we can't determine for sure the order in which bats acquired flight and echolocation, we know that echolocation was a skill bats had very early on. Icaronicturus, contemporary with Onychonicturus, already had echolocation abilities clearly. With the ability to fly, bats avoided direct competition with primates, while echolocation made them the lords of the night sky. During the day, bats hide in dark caves, avoiding competition with birds. From then on, bats thrived and became the second most prosperous group of mammals. Over the next 50 million years, the body structure of bats did not change much compared to what we see today, just some minor modifications. However, their echolocation systems continued to upgrade because their main prey, insects, were co-evolving. For example, various moths specialized their body hairs to form some sound-absorbing structures, and some, like Bertholdia trigona, can actively emit ultrasound to disrupt bat echolocation. Therefore, bats had to upgrade their echolocation systems to better hunt insects. To achieve maximum echolocation power, many bats developed large ears. In addition, some bats, like Rhinolophus, evolved structures called nose leaves to make the direction of their ultrasound more precise. In addition to traditional insectivores, bats have achieved great success in various ecological niches. There are fish-eating bats, nectar-feeding bats, and fruit-eating bats. The most terrifying are the blood-sucking bats, although there are relatively few species of vampire bats, all of them are found in Central and South America. Although the ecolocation system is the best weapon for bats, some bats choose to abandon this weapon. For example, Pteropodidae, which are among the few bats that some people might find cute, have given up ecolocation and instead use visual navigation. They also became the largest bats in history. Whether they will dominate the sky among mammals or fail in competition with birds in the future, we do not know. At least for now, bats have no natural enemies in their ecological niches, and food is abundant, so the lifespan of bats generally reaches 30 to 40 years, far exceeding other mammals of similar size. However, this brings other problems. We often see scenes where a person enters a dark cave and discovers a large number of bats gathered together. Just like in human society, infectious diseases can easily spread to every individual, and bats do not have the medical and health measures of humans. Therefore, bats have become one of the mammalian groups with the most pathogens. In the coevolution with these pathogens, Bats gradually adapted to them, allowing themselves to coexist with these pathogens without causing too much harm to their health. Since humans and bats belong to the same group of mammals, rigorously speaking, both are eutheria. Therefore, most of the plagues in human history can be found in bats. However, this probably shouldn't be blamed on bats, after all humans are willing to try anything. Although fossil evidence is scarce and the evolution of bats is full of mysteries, they have managed to soar under the suppression of birds, setting an example for mammals to take to the skies and leaving behind a legend in the history of animal evolution in the darkness of the night.